guys and welcome back to the channel. You join me here again at the workshop where I have got my car parked in here and this episode I'm going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on it. As you guys are aware with bonnet vents, as you probably saw me do on James's car, over time it gives off obviously heat. Heat escapes through them but over time, you will notice that they do start to crack, fade, and oh, I don't know, it just has some sort of reaction with like the lacquer and the clear coat over the top that lifts the paint off. And after, I'd say about a year, two years, they start to look a bit scruffy. Those ones there I did, whoa, camera slipped, sorry. Um, those ones there I did get off eBay, but I paid a specialist, um, to fit them for me, a local body shop. So they are on there properly, so I don't really want to remove them. I mean, after all, who in their right mind has the balls to cut into their own bonnet? I know I don't, I'm not gonna lie. That is some like seriously risky stuff. You slip and you gotta live with it or replace it. So yeah, I, I paid a body shop to do it for me. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, well, you can see it. That is literally just caused by heat. No more than that. It's rough to the touch. It looks like lots of hairline scratches, but about a week ago, it looked like that all over. But then within a week, because of the heat that we've had in the UK, it's just nearly starting to spread over the whole of the vent. The other one isn't too bad at the moment. It's got a few, it's starting. So I'm gonna try and nip this one in the bud by giving it a fresh coat of paint. Well, that's gonna be part one now of the uh, little maintenance side of this car. And I'll crack on with that and then I'll show you what I'm gonna to do to it afterwards. Because it's not too bad a damage, realistically, I'm gonna start off with some 800 grit paper and go over it, scratch it back. I'm then gonna use a high build primer followed by gloss black and some clear coat. To make sure that I don't rush in between coats, I always, as you are aware now, if you've been keeping up with my channel, I like to do little tasks in between. So not only am I doing the vents today spraying, but I've also got some blue, spirit blue mirror covers, which I'm gonna be taking gloss black as well. They're not for my car. I've already got gloss black mirror covers on my car. Don't know how well you guys can see. They are covered in fly muck, I'm not gonna lie. But um, what do you expect? It's the middle of the summer, flies are out. But yeah, I'm either gonna keep them as spares or sell them on. Um, so if you are after a black set of mirror covers, hit me up and we'll talk. So yeah, I'm gonna crack on with all of this now. Probably already said crack on already, but hey ho. Anyway, I'm gonna get this done, and then I've got a nice little modification to show you guys, which again is along the line of maintenance, because let's face it, if you keep on top of your vehicle, all the jobs don't build up at once, especially on modified vehicles, and you just end up with either a stupidly expensive bill at the end of the day, or you just end up with a lot of jobs that need doing. So I'm gonna get these in paint now and we'll go from there. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the primer to dry on both the things that I'm spraying up, let's have a little chat. My intercooler has been sold pending payment. I've also decided to sell my Velozatec Big Mouth. It, I've tried fitting it, it's a lot of hassle for not a lot of cooling I found out. So I'm gonna be trying to think of other ways to keep the intake temperature down. So I'm in the middle of drafting up an idea and it should be in the post soon. I know today's video isn't overly exciting you got to bear in mind, I am currently making no money out of YouTube. Uh, I've only got my normal day-to-day -day job as a chef. So my budget is only very limited. Hopefully one day when I make it big, if I make it big on YouTube, if I make it big in the chef world, 
who knows, you know, I could be doing up a Mark II Focus RS here, or I could be, well, basically, that's just a dream at this point in time. I've got to own something I can show, and I've got to own something that I can maintain, because my knowledge is very limited. So if you've made it this far to this video, big thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. I, like I say in all my videos, I do appreciate every view. It all helps me build up a, like a YouTube portfolio, let's say, which hopefully one day, you don't know, this is the early days of my channel. I believe this is something like my 23rd, 24th video. But hey, right then, what have I got planned? Well, the smoke test came back clean, you know, all of the seals and all of the pipes were, you know, bulletproof the other day when we done it in here. Yes, I did have a little bit of a mishap at one point as seen on MBTV's video. If you haven't yet seen that, go and check it out. It's a bit funny. The, uh, I kind of put eight pound of boost through the smoke machine, not eight PSI. Yeah, let's just say my smoke machine exploded. So if you're up for a laugh, go over to his channel and uh, have a watch of that. But um, yeah, like I was saying, I've completely forgotten. So yeah, like I say, I've only got a limited budget at the moment, but I am trying to do exciting things to the car. I've got a couple videos in the pipeline, which I hope you guys stick around to and watch. It should be a little bit more exciting than today's. Um, well, yeah, so I'm just waiting for this all to bake off in here. Believe me, it is such a sweat box, this workshop. You don't need a freaking, you know, heater or anything to dry anything in here because click your fingers and it will be dry. In fact, I reckon if I walked up to it and touched it, bearing in mind it only uh, saw primer about less than a minute ago, I reckon it should be uh, perfectly fine. So I'm going to crack on, rub that back, start getting some paint on. Okay guys, so there's the finished product. It, admittedly, it does need a little bit of a polish up to get a little bit of the fish eyeing out. But all in all, it's not a bad finish whatsoever. There's a little, little bit of a clear coat run there, but nothing, bit of 2000 grit can't take out. But it's a lot better than what it was with all the heat burn on it. But yeah, it's smartened up the front end nicely. Now there, it's all matching and all gloss black. If you're watching this far in, thank you very much. Um, to keep along the lines of maintenance today, what I was saying earlier about the smoke testing got me thinking that maybe one of my sensors was faulty between either the map or the math, which is reading the air flow. But I messaged the boys at Unit 5 Motorsport when they had it plugged into their diagnostic system it was registering that he was getting readings off of both the map and the math sensor. So either the parameters are out on the map, um, that's on the car, like it's not reading enough air at one end or the other, or potentially, nearly fell down the pit there, wandering around, or potentially um, the math or the map sensor's dirty and it's not picking up, you know, the right reading. So, I've gone out and I've bought some uh, math sensor cleaner. It's not, don't use brake cleaner when you do it, believe me. It will just eat through it, but you actually have to have a uh, special math sensor cleaner. You spray like two or three squirts on, and on the actual math itself, you have to take it out of the car, and it should remove all of the residual grease and grime Thinking about it, it might make sense why it's a bit intermittent because sometimes the code comes up, sometimes it doesn't. That I've got a boost leak because I drive some really dirty roads, really dusty. So that might be the case. When you do go about fiddling with your math sensor, do not, or I can't stress this enough, under any circumstances, touch it the grease from your fingers, it could get scratched. It just does damage that you don't see. You can't afford to knock your math sensor, touch your math sensor, or, 
you know, wipe it with a cloth because that does so much damage. It's, you can't describe it. It just knocks all the parameters off completely. So I'm gonna whip it out now and the math sensor and um, give it a little spray and hopefully that should be down the problem. If not, I do have it booked in next week with my tuner. Uh, they've said that they'll plug it into their diagnostics and they'll give it a test for me, but hopefully they can see something that four other garages have missed. Who knows? But from what the boys at Unit 5 saying, my map is out because of the sensors blowing up shortly after it was mapped, which means that there was a leak somewhere um, and they weren't registered correctly. So I know people's been saying go with a different tuner, but I'm going to give these guys the benefit of the doubt because I had their stage one software on my car and I didn't have any issues whatsoever. So I really am putting it down to dodgy sensors because I, well, you've seen yourself guys, there is nothing, it's been pressure tested and smoke tested several times. It's been plugged into many snap-on units. It's had many different readings over many different times. So I'm gonna clean it just to see because it just narrows it down a little bit more. I know that the sensors are working because I'm still getting readings in my little, you know, code reader and OBD and all that jazz. So let's see what this does. Okay, so as you can see, I have got an open cone filter. So the chances of it being dirty is quite high. I've taken it off with a seven mil to release the Jubilee clip. And now it's a three mil hex head to get in at the uh, sensor. So the chances of this being dirty are quite high. So I'm wearing gloves as well, just to reduce the risk of potential grease or anything else that could potentially, well, potentially go on it. Like I say, you don't really want to touch this with your bare hands. Yes, it is blooming hot in here today. So uh, I am a bit sweaty as well, which is not helpful. But, so yeah, three mil, I believe these hex heads are. Sensor in question, well, one of two. It's either your map or your map. All right. Here's the sensor. See this little wire in here? All right. Uh, if it's in focus, that gives off a heat reading. That goes then through to your map sensor, which then that measures your air. If that's dirty, which to be fair, it looks fairly clean, but I'm gonna give it a quick spray anyway. But if that's dirty, then that would be the reasoning behind it. So I'm just gonna give it a quick one or two squirts of this. You don't wanna get it too wet for obvious reasons. If it wants to work for me, there we go. All right, and that is a cleaner of some description. Quite it smells strong, I can tell you that much. And it will naturally dry itself. But under no circumstances, touch it. Can't really. See much in a way of grime coming off, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Because at one point this was running a K&N filter, which is greased or oiled, sorry. So that could be 
part of the issue. So there's only one way to tell that. That's by uh, trialing it over the next week before it goes back in to the tuners. Fingers crossed that was the issue and it saved me a couple of quid having it plugged into another diagnostic just to tell me the same thing over and over again that there's a leak and they don't know where it is. I'm really hoping that this sorts it out guys because I'm trying to, as you know from the uh, previous video, build up a car to go towards a higher power grade. You know, stage three, maybe stage four. Turbo yet undecided. In the comments below, if you've watched it this far, comments below, what turbo do you think I should go for to reach my goal of 350 brake horsepower? Okay, so that's the MAF sensor cleaned, all plumbed back in. Now the MAP sensor. You can find your MAP sensor, if ever you have a boost leak like mine and you cannot quite diagnose it. Well, this sensor here is your MAP sensor. This line here goes down to your blow-off valve. Right, if you've got an aftermarket one like me. This T-piece in, because then that goes to my boost gauge that's in the cabin. So I'm going to pop this one off now. Now, uh, under, well, it should not be dirty really, this one. It really shouldn't be because of the location. But the other day when I was back at the Unit 5 with Christian, we popped it off to uh, have an inspection. We found a little bit of oil in it, which believe we believe has come up from the blower valve. Which, well, at the time we didn't have any cleaner, so we only gave it a... A wipe out around the actual housing itself, which is the extension from Forge. Right, oh <clears throat> dear me, hay fever. Right, so now I've got the cleaner, I'm gonna clean it and hopefully there's no oil in there because that would, I don't know, show another problem somewhere else. But let's get this off and give it a clean and pop it back on. Okay, so that's that sensor done. And, well, both sensors are now clean i don't know how well because you're not allowed to touch it but we'll soon find out hopefully that's the cause of my eight problems and it just all goes away but anyhow right then to keep on today's theme of maintenance to the car i don't know about you but i'm losing a little bit of motivation here but it's so blooming warm i have gone out and i have bought myself an oil catch can uh, this one goes on the PCV side, which will be linking into this line here, going down. Right then, the perks of running this style of can. Well, if you're running, well, the, we all know the turbo on this car is fairly dirty. If you've taken any of your breather hoses off in the past, you will find oil in them, right? On that side especially, you will find oil. It's just the thing. It does. It's a very dirty turbo. Any engineer or Ford mechanic will soon be able to tell you that if you ask them, because it is a dirty, it's just a dirty turbo. Right, so the perks of running this style of oil catch can is it saves your valves from potentially needing a walnut blast. If you don't know what a walnut blast is, put this video on pause and Google it. Right, you have to have your valves taken out and just blast it off because so much oil and residue is sprayed onto your valve itself and it sets and it could cause a whole lot of problems, especially power loss. Or you could, your engine just could seize up altogether and a, cat, a simple can could prevent it. But you've got to bear in mind though, when you have fitted an oil catch can, A, keep an eye on your oil levels because it will gather in the can it's inevitable, it's what it's there for. So it'll catch all the oil vapor going around rather than it being recycled through the system. And B, remember to drain your oil catch can frequently because if it overflows or fills up, you, there you've got one pipe coming off 
one pipe going in where you can in the middle. If your can fills up, the vapour can go in, but it's essentially blocked and it could end up becoming a straw and sucking all the oil out the can and chucking it into your engine. That's worst case scenario. That is worst, worst case scenario. Or it could just like not turn over whatsoever because there's a serious blockage and that would be classed as a serious blockage. So let's have a look what I've actually bought here. Yes, I've already opened the bag because I wanted to make sure it was all in there. I've gone for some red hoses because I think that looks smart as hell. And I've gone for, let's see what else is in here. A blue can, as you can see, to stay in line with my bay that I've got going on. You also throw in these fittings with some lock tape on it. Don't know the actual specific word, but you screw that in and it will lock in place because of the tape. Okay, this kit itself is made by a company called Majestic Performance. They can't, this kit came in at about 65 quid, right? And if you look at any of the equivalent other kits that are on the market, they start from about 180 upwards. So for 65 pounds made for this car, I think it's a bit of a steal really. Let's have a look at how well it is inside and I hopefully should be able to show you what I mean by uh, in and out and all that jazz. Bit squeaky. Right, okay. So there's the oil drain, if you want to drain it from underneath to save getting into there. And here is the filter system. It is a very well constructed piece of equipment. I've seen a lot more expensive oil catch cans made a hell of a lot worse than this. But this is just, well, it looks very well made. The filter is absolutely tiny. So it should do a good job I'm hoping, preventing any oil from going back into the uh, engine because that filter system is brilliant. Now in order to fit this can to your system you need to take the existing hose, which is this black one here, the corrugated looking thingy, and you need to cut into it. This is and clamp on the ones that they provided, so it sort of meets it in the middle. So I'm gonna me try and measure it up best I can. I'll probably need to take this cover off and adjust it to get it to work, because the can, if I grab it quickly, will be sat about there on the actual uh, heat shield. I'm gonna probably rivet it in place to save it falling around rather than the screws they provided. Because rivets I find are a little bit stronger than little self-tapping screws. So yeah, that's how I'm gonna go about it. But now I need to try and work out now on how to attach it. Okay, so Majestic Performance very kindly emailed the fitting instructions on how to put this on. From what I can tell, the straight pipe goes into here, like so, of the PCV. The curved ended pipe here goes into here. And the can, to my preference, is going to be fitted around this area. They have provided clamps to clamp it all down. Now it's, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna do this off camera because I'm working this out for myself. So, yeah, I'm going to try and fit it and I'm going to show you the aftermath. Fingers crossed it goes well. There's only one way to find out. Stick around and we'll see. Okay then guys, after much jiggery and pokery, I took my time on it and I managed to get it fitted. I do believe there's no, more, there's no vacuum leaks, to my knowledge. Fingers crossed. I haven't smoke tested it to make sure. But I can't afford for there to be any more. I'll just turn the camera around now and show you the fitted product. Okay, okay, so guys, to so get the uh, can on, I fitted it here. As I said, I riveted it in place. Very sturdy, it ain't going nowhere. 
I then attached the hoses onto here and I took the top one around, the one that's on the right angle, and it goes down to here. Sorry, I'll put my um, air conditioning cover on already. My apologies on that one. But you can see I had to cut the original P PCV pipe and then, and then clamped it down so he's secure. I've then taken the other side, the other PCV pipe, down and I had to make a little rubber joiner because I had to trim up this hose to make it fit properly. So I made a little rubber joiner because I cut this one a bit too short. Accidents happen. <laughs> so as I say, I made a little rubber joiner and I clamped it. I pushed it onto there, secured it in place. And I've clamped it on. I have checked. There is no leaks that I can hear. I did have to tighten clamps and move them around and make sure that it wasn't leaking anywhere. Because of course, leaking means losing power, especially on turbo cars. I know it's more important on nat naturally aspirated cars, but I can't afford any more leaks, especially with what I'm trying to achieve. So yeah, for all you guys hoping to put the PCV Majestic uh, oil catch can on your car, I hope that, well, it's not a how-to, but I hope it gives you a rough idea how it's meant to sit in the bay. Um, if you've messaged them on Facebook, they will email you a, um, like a photo and an instruction manual on how to fit it just in case you were unsure. Like myself, I did ask because I'd rather be safe than sorry. So thank you very much, Majestic Performance. Um, I look forward to seeing the rest of your products that you're in the middle of making. Who knows, I might buy some more. Let's see how this one holds up, but I believe it is a good product because it seems very well made indeed. Thanks for watching today, guys. I'm gonna call it a day now. Um, just remember, today's video is all about a bit of maintenance. It's not a service or nothing. I just wanted to show you that owning such a vehicle does need maintaining. I know, Ford life. I know you're all thinking that it will break. True. <laughs> it will break. Everything breaks if you don't look after it. So remember, guys, if you're going to modify your car, look after your car. Mind you, just look after your car full stop. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye for now.